emotional night inside Thompson Bowling Arena. Senior night, the final home game for some of the players that have led this Tennessee program back to the top of the national basketball scene. Admiral Schofield, Kyle Alexander, and walk-offs Brad Woods, Will Woodson and Lucas Campbell got the crowd on their feet to get things started tonight as Tennessee will try to refocus because they've got a tough one tonight against the Mississippi State Bulldogs who come in nine and seven in league play just had a five game winning streak snapped over the weekend but Tennessee looks to have gotten their swagger back as well this is important in a couple of areas Tennessee of course trying to chase down an SEC regular season championship Meanwhile, Mississippi State in a log jam. South Carolina wins earlier today. That pushes them a half a game ahead of Mississippi State, Auburn, and Ole Miss, along with Florida for that fourth spot and the double bye at the SEC tournament, which begins next weekend. Dave Neal alongside former Tennessee Vol, Dane Bradshaw. And certainly, Dane, this is a Tennessee team. When that guy right there, Grant Williams, is rolling, this team is generally rolling. And when Tennessee needed their star to step up, he delivered. This past week, the reigning SEC Player of the Week on the road at, Mulls, at, at Ole Miss hits the clutch buzzer beater down the stretch and then not only delivers on the road at Ole Miss, as you'll see here in the clutch moments, the game-winning basket. And it won't look like much on their schedule when it Ole Miss, but I thought it was one of the most important victories so they could get that swagger back like you talked about. And then when everything seemed to be working against Kentucky, it was working for Grant Williams that was well. Huge win in round two against the Wildcats. And also an opportunity for him to be the front runner for SEC Player of the Year. Well, Grant Williams, along with Quindary Weatherspoon of Mississippi State, the top two scorers in the league going at it tonight inside this uh, massive arena that will have close to 20,000 on hand on this late start for the Tennessee Volunteers. There is Q, of course his brother Nick, who was a starter with him the last couple of years, has been suspended indefinitely, so he's going at it alone in terms of the weather spoons on the floor. But this is a Mississippi State team that made some lineup adjustments along the way. Inserted the freshman Rary, Reggie Perry. They took out of the starting lineup a guy that started a bunch of games in Eric Coleman, and certainly that has made a difference for these guys who have won five of their last six games. They're starting to click. Despite that last loss to Auburn, this is one of the most talented teams in the SEC. And Quindary Weatherspoon, number 11 for Mississippi State. Keep an eye on him because if you haven't seen this guy play, he is the most natural, smoothest scorer in the SEC. There is the starting five for Tennessee. Bone, Turner, Schofield, Williams, and Alexander. I'll be interested to see how Admiral Schofield handles the first few minutes here. He was really emotional uh, before the game today as, they, as he was being honored with his family and these crowd uh, on their feet throughout the entire introduction of the Schofields. Here's Lamar Peters. We'll try to keep him out of the paint tonight, but that is a tough task for any team. Weatherspoon, Reggie Perry, strong move, couldn't get it to go, and the rebound right into the hands of Kyle Alexander. You try to get Schofield a shot early on, try to get him settled down a little bit. As long as it's inside out, and that's what Tennessee loves to do is attack the paint first. There you go, Admiral Schofield, first basket of the game. And that'll help the jitters you talked yeah. about. It always feels good for that first one to go in, especially on senior night. Were you a nervous wreck on senior night? <laughs> I was the only senior, it was kind of nice. <laughs> There's nobody to celebrate but me, they had to. Here's Perry. Spoon. And Derry had 25 points and 11 rebounds against Auburn, along with six assists on Saturday, but not enough. Mississippi State trailed big in that game, cut it down to five late, but not enough as they were behind by as much as 17. Uh, and the senior urgency that Quindary Weatherspoon has started to show, including that comeback against Auburn, even though they came up short, it's the sense of urgency that was lacking on this Mississippi State team last year, but they've got it following number 11. Oh, shoot. No 
good. Adu tapped it around, finally picked up by Perry. There's Carver. He knocks home the three. Better find him since Nick Weatherspoon has been out of the lineup, suspended. Tyson Carter has been huge for the Bulldogs. Count the basket. Jordan Bone will head to the free throw line. Don't blink with Jordan Bone, the fastest player in the SEC. Gets it up and down the court in five seconds or less with the and one. I don't know if there's a more confident player on the Tennessee Volunteers roster than this guy, Jordan Bone. First of the conference at assist, averaging 13 and a half points a game, but can't convert there. An 82% free throw shooter. Peters. And stuck on the window by Williams. Boy, how about Bone? Splits a double team, but can't convert. Carter will try another three, and he has another one. Back-to-back -back threes for the young man who has been feeling it of late. 15 three-pointers over the last four games. We talked about the confidence Jordan Bone has. Well, for the Bulldogs, it's Tyson Carter. Good catch by Williams. Working on a do. Hounds off the back of the rim. Rebound to Carter. And that's not a household name. Abdul Adu for Mississippi State. But he could be a huge factor in this game. His defense on Grant Williams. Boy, Adu passed up a little 10 footer. Gets it back now as he faces up on Williams. That'll be an offensive foul. Grant Williams, a terrific two-way player, does such a good job of protecting the rim without fouling. Just jumps straight in the air, keeps himself out of harm's way. And then again on the defensive end, he's just so solid and reliable. Smart, great IQ, and Adu got to have to be a little bit quicker with his decision-making against an excellent defender like Williams in the post. Williams is averaging 19.3 points a game. Quindary Weatherspoon at 18.8. Well, the big thing for Grant Williams, he's averaging over 30 minutes a game. How many big guys in this league are struggling to stay out of foul trouble? So many averaging 20 to 25. But he has stayed on the floor for the balls, and they are certainly better than he is. Five points now for Admiral Schofield. Extend that lead here. Lamonte Turner with the steal in the lane. There's Carter. Off to Eric Holman. They'll swing it around to Weatherspoon. This fires. Offensive rebound by Perry. He lost it. Turner can't handle it. It'll be Mississippi State basketball when we come back. Ball's out in front by three. Peanut butter jelly time in Knoxville. Kicking it to his sidekick, Admiral Schofield. And then Lamonte Turner. This crowd was on their feet all Saturday with that win against Kentucky. He's keeping them on their feet. Unisom knows when you don't get enough sleep, it's hard to avoid the fog. Even the simplest things seem tough. You may make mistakes. You're just trying to push through. Say good night to the fog. Unisom the sleep expert is specially formulated to give you a good night's sleep. So you're ready to take on your day. With Unisom, the sleep expert. Thank you so much. New purple, eh, Deb? He's always wanted to try one. Well, they have a 100-night trial, so... Everyone wants to sleep better, and can. Purple makes it easy with free shipping and our 100-night trial. And for a limited time, choose a free purple product with mattress purchase at purple.com slash TV.
Studio update, huge game between Auburn and Alabama. Bama 42-8 all-time against the Tigers in Coleman Coliseum. Tevin Mack trying to make it 43-8. Tied up five early. Now back to a loud Knoxville. Yes, it is, Peter. It is another outstanding crowd here supporting the Volunteers, a team that was ranked number one for four weeks this year. Dave Neal alongside Dane Bradshaw, and certainly a guy that's watched this program kind of unfold before our eyes since Rick Barnes has gotten this job is Admiral Schofield, and of course Kyle Alexander, but Schofield's the one that's made the most noise amongst that senior group. Dave, as you look across Tennessee's history, I'd say in the last 50 years, there's more talented players, as good as Admiral Schofield yeah. has been, but when you talk about the top 10 most memorable and likable players, I can't imagine a list without Admiral Schofield's name on it. I mean, he has meant that much to this program. He came in as an underdog. He's been coachable. He's, he's been accessible to the fans. He's carried himself so well on and off the court. And he has endeared himself to this fan base because of his approach to the game. I mean, he plays the game the way the fans would play if they were ever given the ability or opportunity and he has certainly been a fan favorite throughout his tenure. Rick Barnes has said this week, when people ask about Admiral and what he's meant, he says, you know, he's just an emotional guy. Uh, wears his emotions on his sleeve, but one thing that you can always count on with Admiral is he'll be the hardest worker on the floor. Leads by example. Eric Coleman, who's been coming off the bench for the last month, Gets in the scorebook and makes it a 9-8 game. Eric Holman came into the season as an NBA draft prospect. Hadn't had the season he wanted, but if you treat him just like a typical reserve off the bench, you're going to get lit up. He is very talented. Um, his first shot since coming into the game, a little too strong, but a foul underneath. And Teddy Valentine eyeballing number two down there, Lamar Peters. It shows exactly what he did to Grant Williams after the call. <laughs> That'll be number two on Peters. And remember, this is a Mississippi State team that does not have much depth. So when any of these guards leave, it becomes an issue. And Lamar Peters is the key to this team. They've got tons of talent. And yes, Quindary Witherspoon's their top scorer. But if Lamar Peters is on his game, they become a top 25 type team. If not, you know, they, they become middle of the pack in the SEC. He is that important to them. So not a good sign for the Bulldogs with him on the bench early. Fulkerson gets it to Schofield, who slips on the baseline and loses the basketball. Admiral will be subbed out as Lamonte Turner will check back in. Looks like he was grabbing that calf and he hit the floor. Well, now Tyson Carter will have to run the point. We talked to Coach Howard about that today, about what do you do when Peters is out. He says he feels completely fine with Carter running the point. Foul. Tripped up on the way to the basket. The speed in which this Tennessee team gets out in transition, the athleticism they have on the wings. I mean, it is get it and go. And Jordan Bowden is thinking attack mode that entire time sprinting the court. You asked an interesting question of Coach Barnes today, and uh, you said, are you trying to, like, get the ball to move in a second, two seconds, three seconds? He said, no, half a second. <laughs> That's it. They, they want to get that ball in the paint within five seconds. He puts a lot of pressure on these guys. But it was their point of emphasis this offseason, the flow of their offense. And they are at their best when they're getting close to 20 assists a game. The games they've lost in conference is when they're around 10 or 11 assists. So they are not nearly as effective of a team when they're not playing together. Perry gets his own miss, goes back strong, and he'll lay it up and in. And that's where he beats you is on the offensive glass. Weatherspoon. Great defense, comes away with a basketball. Three on two, Holman. Here's Perry again. He lost it. Fulkerson stole it. It'll be saved to Bowden. Williams cuts and lays it in.
Here's Holman. Up and under, left it short. We'll have another opportunity. In traffic, that won't go. Now Perry throws it up, and he's fouled. Good work on the glass from the Bulldogs. Well, plenty of 50-50 balls, too many offensive rebounding opportunities for the Bulldogs. And Reggie Perry is such a talented freshman for Mississippi State. I mean, Tennessee's vulnerable a little bit on the defensive glass. If there's one weakness they have, it's corralling those defensive rebounds on a consistent pace, basis. And if you let Reggie Perry punk you, he'll do that. And already with several offensive rebounds early in this game. One of the most highly, highly sought after players coming out of high school. He has started the last nine, but if you go back over the last 11 games, he's averaging over 14 points and nine rebounds and has six double doubles. And already tonight, eight rebounds. <laughs> we haven't played seven yeah. minutes yet. We've seen those before and after pictures Tennessee fans have of Grant Williams, Admiral Schofield. Reggie Perry's only a freshman, and he already looks like an after picture. I mean, <laughs> he is a hoss. Tied at 12. Bulldogs have withstood the early onslaught from Tennessee in an emotional start to this one. On a senior night here at Thompson Bowling Arena. Schofield. Now Bowden with three on the shot clock. That's no good. Holman the rebound. Weatherspoon pull up three. Wendary now 0 for 3 from the floor. Boy, watch Bone fly down the court. Alexander at the elbow. He knocks it home. And the way Jordan Bone has elevated his game with the outside jump shot, teams have to respect that off the pick and roll, and that opens up things for the pop with Kyle Alexander capitalizing. Bulldogs have missed their last five field goal attempts. Not going to keep him quiet for long. Weatherspoon with a three. Schofield for three. Got it. That's two of those for the Admiral. Yeah, that, kid, that kid doesn't feel pressure. You know, coming into this game, a lot riding your family's here and all that, but the higher the stakes, the better he plays. Keep an eye on Weatherspoon. When he's got that ball on the right, he's going all the way to the rim. Blocked by Alexander. That'll lead the charge. Schofield back to Bowden. Schofield to Bone. Bowden will try it again. Timeout, Mississippi State. The lead is five. And the Vols have knocked home three three-pointers. Dave, they've been hot from the perimeter, getting the open looks, and Admiral Schofield doing what he's been doing all season long, making the most of open shots, and the Kyle Alexander creates the offensive rebound opportunity. You give Tennessee a second chance, they tend to come through. Jordan Bowden knocking it down. Sports fans are gearing up at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and players you love. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. A hand-breaded filet with the hot taste of Nashville. Introducing the new Zaxville Hot Filet Sandwich for a limited time, only at Zaxby's. And don't miss Shazam. Shazam! Experience it in IMAX. Have you ever worked for Dr. Francis? Oh, yeah. He's okay. Just okay? Guess who just got reinstated? Well, not officially. 
Nervous? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. I'll see you in there. Just okay is not okay, especially when it comes to your network. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. Now with 5G Evolution, the first step to 5G. More for your thing. That's our thing. Judy update this time at the Pavilion. And Ole Miss, K.J. Buffin trying to get something done for the Rebels. Gets P.J. Washington up in the air. Makes something happen. Terrence Davis on senior night already has eight points. Rebels with an early lead. All right, thanks, Peter. And if you didn't know already, let me just uh, alert you to the fact that the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament early round games will be right here on the SEC Network. I know you were asking me earlier, Peter, where you could find those. They will be right here on the network. And then on Wednesday, it'll be March 13th. The first round games will be here. The Thursdays and Fridays games will be on the network. But then you're going to have to switch over to ESPN, the semifinals and championship game. We'll move over to the mothership on the weekend. Of course, all those games also streaming live on the ESPN app. Tennessee LSU currently in a tie for first place in the F SEC after the Vols defeated Kentucky on Saturday. LSU does hold the tiebreaker for the number one seed. They would both be declared conference champs if they finish with identical records. Of course, everybody trying to snap Kentucky's four game or four straight SEC tournament titles. An exciting Saturday to come, just like last season when it was Auburn, Tennessee trying to separate themselves as outright champs, ended up being co-champs as it went down to the wire. See the SEC championship remaining schedule for the three teams really chasing it down. Kentucky will finish things up against Florida, LSU tomorrow against Florida, and then they will finish at Vanderbilt, and Tennessee will head to Auburn. Mark Peters just checked back in. Remember, he's playing with two fouls. Dave, zero assists for Mississippi State, and it's shots like that that are not coming off any help or moving the basketball that's going to get them in trouble. Eve Pons checks in for the balls. Schofield. He's working on Robert Woodard. It's an 8 0 Tennessee run. Woodard. Nice drive in the lane. He's fouled, but Admiral Schofield off to a exceptional start with 10 points early. Early in his career, he was a three point shooter. That was it. And now he's developed this mid range game off the bounce. A guy that can take you all the way to the rim, but you have to respect his jumper as well. And man, I've seen Admiral Schofield on a mission before, but <laughs> even he looks like he's got something extra in the tank tonight. Schofield fifth in the conference in scoring. And that touched about every part of that rim and bounces out for Robert Woodard, the seconds. Freshman out of Columbus, Mississippi, just about 20 minutes away from that Starkville campus. Another good looking young player, 6'7, 230. Missed them both. long are they it is quick there's a shot by Williams no good but Alexander keeps it alive offensive foul and sometimes Tennessee will set sort of a fake screen and that time I think Williams got caught in the middle was I gonna slip am I gonna stay set and that ends up being a foul on Williams you, you can't leave early either slip right away but if you try to Move a little bit, but I don't know. Seen a lot yeah, worse. Looked, yeah, yeah. Even though he was trying to get out quick, I think he stayed solid. Tough call. Two fouls, though, on Williams, so he will sit for a moment. Mississippi State's got to get their shot back. They've missed seven of their last eight attempts. There's a guy that can snap. 
got that streak. And Weatherspoon, though, won't have the opportunity to shoot it as he travels. But that's exactly what you want to do against Quindary Weatherspoon. Take away the ball screen action and force him to be a left-hand finisher. Don't let him pull when he goes left. Turner lost the handle. Woodard there with it. Up ahead, Peters. Bout chases him. Perry and it knocked out of his hands, and it's kept alive on the baseline. Fulkerson. Ball is knocked out of his hands. Offensive foul. They're going to say a moving screen. Is that on Fulkerson? I believe it will be. Dave, I think what caught John Fulkerson was this is one of those where you try to fake post it up a little bit and get in the way and clear some space, but then it seemed like it had much to do with the play. Nevertheless, they they caught the action. I'm more inclined to agree with that call than I was yeah, the one on the I wing. agree with that. But aside from the questionable calls one way or another, Mississippi State's got to get things going on offense. And right now, there's another turnover just... No rhythm whatsoever. Tennessee's got to capitalize because this Bulldog team is much more capable than they're showing right now. Perry. Knocks it out of Fulkerson's hand, but picks up a foul in the process. And this is what he does. He, he gets you these extra plays and possessions, whether it's offensive rebound, using his link to deflect passes, or diving on the floor. John Fulkerson has really been giving this team some good minutes over the past few games. Three straight turnovers by the Bulldogs have allowed Tennessee to push this to seven. Schofield lost a handle on that basketball going up. Peters comes out of there with it. Holman. He stumbles. Woodard, that's off the mark. Bow on the rebound. Good of a dunk I've seen from Kyle Alexander in four years, and his boy Jordan Bowen spotted him the whole way. Said, "Run the floor, big fella. I got you." Jordan Bowen pushes it up the court, and look at this dime of a bounce pass. Al. He eyes his big man. There he goes up with the flush and finish, bringing it home for his family in the crowd. Kyle Alexander. Capital One Saver card. Earn 4% cash back on dining and 4% on entertainment. Now when you go out, you cash in. What's in your wallet? Experience super hearing with Magic Ear. You'll be able to hear a pin drop from 100 feet away and watch TV without bothering anybody. It's so discreet, no one will know you're listening. He's cute. You'll be able to hear a whisper from the other side of the room. Have you seen Dawn? She looks amazing. It's perfect for the backseat of the car and for sportsmen and bird watchers. Get yours today. Senior night in Tuscaloosa, our last game for Riley Norris down in Coleman Coliseum. He'll miss the three. It's all right. John Petty says, hey, you want to call for it again? Second time, some charm. Bama up 10 on Auburn. Now back to where Kyle Alexander has Knoxville rocking. <laughs> Kyle has uh, put on a show here early on, especially after that last dunk a moment ago. But one of the seniors on senior night, young man out of Canada, and 
certainly he has a tremendous amount of athletic ability. Remember, this is a guy that is 6'11", running the floor like he's 6'6". And Dave, Rick Barnes can't talk about Kyle Alexander without wishing he could have redshirted him. But they needed him so badly his freshman year, they couldn't afford to do it. And every year he'd say, God, I want to redshirt him. I know how good he can be. He's got so much potential. But to Alexander's credit, he kept getting more and more valuable to the team that you couldn't imagine a roster without him on it. And Tennessee doesn't lose that game to Loyola Chicago last year. That guy blocking shots is in there. Perry, easiest basket he'll get tonight. Good defense by Peters to keep that alive. Tennessee faithful, by the way, can also thank Kyle Alexander for bringing Grant Williams here. Grant Williams was hosted here on campus by Kyle Alexander as Carter at the other end lays it up and in, so a couple of quick baskets. So that relationship certainly helped Grant Williams find his way here to the University of Tennessee. Well, Carter steps in the passing lane and intercepts it. As I said, Tennessee really needed to capitalize because Mississippi State was playing about as poor as they could offensively. And what you've seen the past couple possessions is the type of speed, athleticism, and production they are capable of. Little fall away by Lamar. That won't drop. Perry tapped it around, but into Alexander's hands. And that is six rebounds for Kyle Alexander. Wilkerson the rebound. Eight offensive rebounds for Tennessee. Boom to Alexander. Blocked by Holman. Now Weatherspoon. Schofield is back. When Derry can't convert, last touch by. That is such incredible hustle of effort by Admiral Schofield. Quindary Weatherspoon is one of the best finishers in the SEC. Not necessarily just a high flying above the rim guy, but he just knows how to finish through traffic and to force an awkward tough two on a fast break like that saves Tennessee two points for Mississippi State. Boy, not been a good stat line for Weatherspoon. One of six from the field, four turnovers. And I think that's got to be the good news for the Bulldogs. Is, you know, again, he, he can't play much worse, and you're only down five. That was an easy two points for the sophomore, Derek Walker. up strong lays it in five point game as we close it on five minutes to play here in the opening half Boom. off to Turner on three no good Holman the rebound much better job by Mississippi State keeping the ball out of the paint defending that pick and roll making Tennessee settle for a contested perimeter shot. Carter, Woodard, got it to go. Fulkerson tried to draw the charge, no whistle, back the other way come the ball. Well, Woodard's got some strength on him, doesn't he? He is a well-built young man. Weatherspoon, knocks that one away. Bone, leading assist man in the SEC, just a simple pick and roll, and help's got to come over. You got to help the helper if you're Mississippi State. Derek Walker, another guy between Walker and Fulkerson, they've really had some nice production recently. A lot of that because Kyle Alexander's had some foul trouble, but that's the quality of depth this Tennessee team has. Walker and Fulkerson could start on a lot of teams in this league instead with the balls they have a reserve role. Bowden. Tough shot as the shot clock is winding down, but another 
possession coming for the balls. Well, these long rebounds have been in Tennessee's favor. Mississippi State's got to hustle to it. Woodard. Reverse layup. Holman underneath. He's triple team. Bowden hung on the rim as that shot was going up. That looked like a potential goal tip call to me. The basket's still shaking. Weatherspoon working on Bowden. Took it to the rack. He'll clean up his own miss. Timeout taken by Tennessee. And Mississippi State has cut this to one. It's a 10-2 run by the Bulldogs. In the South, there's a zest for life that's unrivaled. From family gatherings to football games, we enjoy good food, great fun, and warm hospitality. And we always do it with style. For generations, Belk has been a Southern staple, helping families celebrate life. In fact, we've been around about as long as college football. Belk, celebrating 130 years of modern Southern style. SEC Women's Basketball Tournament is tipping off in Greenville, South Carolina, March 6th through the 10th. Be a part of the experience. This is your opportunity to witness the best student athletes in the country compete for the 2019 SEC Tournament Championship title. We will see you in that Greenville. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit secsports.com. SEC Women's Basketball. It just means more. Peter Burns, Pat Bradley coming up in half. We'll show you highlights of Kentucky, Ole Miss, and Auburn, Alabama. What are you seeing right there in Knoxville so far? Mississippi State's defense is getting tough, and they have nine offensive rebounds. So they need a big body guy like Dane Bradshaw down there at Tennessee. I feel big body. Yeah, I feel like around. him and Dave Neal have had like three boxes of tag along. Is that true, guys? Nice. The SEC Women's Basketball Tournament begins on Wednesday from Greenville, South Carolina with 13th seed Florida and 12th seed Ole Miss. Starts things off at 11 a.m. Eastern. The first three rounds of the tournament will be on the SEC Network with the semifinals on ESPNU. And then the championship game on Sunday will be over on ESPN2. And, of course, I think in these parts, a lot of folks looking at that 8-9 game, which will be on Thursday as Tennessee and LSU battle. Tennessee in a real bind right now. They are the last team in the NCAA tournament field projected by Charlie Cream. And the first team out is LSU. So that 8-9 matchup, basically an NCAA tournament game for those two teams. A lot on the line for the Lady Balls, And similar to some of the teams on the bubble on the men's side where you go into that conference tournament and you are now playing for your postseason lives. And the good news is, the quality win opportunities are there. The bad news is they're against some really good teams. It's amazing that uh, you start thinking about where this league was five, seven, eight years ago, and you get to this point in the season, it'd be hard to improve your, at the time, RPI, just because there weren't many opportunities in conference play. But heck, even South Carolina will get a little bump today with their win on the road at Texas A&M. Texas A&M actually in their net, which is the new standard by which the NCAA judges these teams, evaluates them, was 30 slots higher than South Carolina. The Aggies were 69, and South Carolina, or excuse me, 66, and South Carolina was 96. I love the recent story on The Athletic by Dana O'Neill where she quoted Ben Howland talked about his story of recruiting Mike Trangisi to the SEC and having his influence on getting this league over the hump and the quality of basketball and the depth. So many people contributed, including Ben Howland and his influence getting the Bulldogs set up for their first tournament appearance in about a decade. Carter turns it over a moment ago. Johnson, that's off the back of the iron. Boy, just no room to pass when they get near the paint. Well, when Weatherspoon has Walker on him out there, no need to drive into traffic. Make him move his feet on the perimeter and take advantage of the big man. And a foul, Weatherspoon. 
across the arms of Schofield. You know, Mississippi State, a team at 21 and 8, 9 and 7 in league play. They are number 22 in the net right now, but they have eight quad one wins. That's the 11th best number in the country. I mean, they have done a, a lot of work throughout this season, a great non conference schedule. And Played well enough in conference play. What's impressed me so much about the job Ben Howland has done is keeping this team together. They've had their share of adversity this season, whether it's suspensions or the fact that they've got so many individuals with high expectations. And when you have a guy like Eric Holman, a senior, that goes to the bench with Reggie Perry, a freshman, taking a spot, that could downward spiral for a lot of teams. They have hung in there together and continue to play extremely well when they needed to the most. Another redshirt sophomore, Jalen Johnson, with a second chance opportunity for the balls offensively. Tennessee has attacked that offensive backboard and made Mississippi State pay. Last touch by Tennessee, and it belonged to the Bulldogs. Ten turnovers tonight for Ben Howland's club. Very uncharacteristic. They average just 13 a game. In the last game they had a bunch against Auburn's pressure, but this time too many unforced. And a foul on Weatherspoon as he takes it to the basket. Two shots coming up. This is their best play. Just ball screen up top for Quindary Weatherspoon. He makes the right decision almost every time. A guy that's got a mid-range to him, he can pull up from three and certainly go all the way to the rack. Jerry Pollard having a chat with Weatherspoon. Been a lot of chirping going on, not just between Weatherspoon and some balls, but I mean, we saw earlier Lamar Peters and Lamonte Turner having a little chit-chat. You expect that from Lamar Peters each game. I love watching <laughs> it, especially Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Bree and Tyree and Lamar Peters. I wish they could have that that wired up sometime. I need a little seven second delay or yeah. something like that, but <laughs> it'd be good TV. That pass is deflected, but back to Turner. Mississippi State two of five at the free throw line. Schofield with a shoulder fake. Passed around. Holman will save it. Doesn't it feel like Tennessee's been in control of this game? Yeah, yeah I mean, here they are. Four point game. Mississippi State's got the ball less than a minute to go. I mean, you gotta like where you're at if you've been happy. I mean, it feels like it's a 10 point game. Schofield will save it. And Reggie Perry thought he was fouled. about eight seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock. The bone will wind this down. Knocked out of bounds, so Tennessee will have one last opportunity. If you're a bench player reserved for Tennessee, you just can't give up if your number's not called very often. Because all of a sudden, Jalen Johnson giving them really valuable minutes, a guy that's played sparingly throughout the course of this season. And here he is in the first half, giving Tennessee some good run. Five seconds. Lamonte Turner working on Weatherspoon. Layup is good. Right the horn sounds. Tennessee will finish the half on a 5-0 run to take a six-point lead here at the break. Nobody wants the ball in their hands more than Lamonte Turner when the clock is winding down. He clears it out, says, I got this, takes it all the way to the rack, finishes through traffic, give Tennessee a little bit more momentum heading into halftime. So on senior night, Schofield leads Tennessee with 11 points. Alexander leads it with seven rebounds, and Tennessee leads by six at the break. Time to get it to the studio. Peter, it's all yours. Thank you, Dave Neal. 31-25, you hear the sounds of Rocky Top, and rightfully so, with the uh, Vols and their fifth-ranked team in the country looking good in the first half. Peter Burns, Pat Bradley.
Pat, I was the anchor when we launched this network in 2014, and I sure. always hoped that we would have nights like this in college hoops, <laughs> because for a couple of years it wasn't, but we've got three great games going on right now, including one out in Knoxville uh, between six different tournament teams right now. What did you see from the Vols and Bulldogs in the first half? Well, you saw the Vols get out to that emotional first, uh, uh, first senior half. Night, yeah. yeah, senior night. They, they, and then Mississippi State settled in. I thought defensively. Yeah. They, they kept Tennessee out of the lane, forced them into some threes, some quick threes, some deep threes. And Mississippi State is long. They can defense a rebound. They get out in transition. You saw a couple of times when they were able to get ahead of the defense, mm -hmm. got to the rim, got some buckets. Still, though, nine offensive rebounds. They got ten turnovers. Yeah. But the, their ability to offensive rebound gives them a chance, man, like right. against anybody in any arena. Well, Mississippi State, remember, uh, out-rebounded Auburn by 20, even though Auburn ended up winning that game. So they have the bigs. That's an element. Sure. Uh, how about Kyle Alexander? We talked about it right before the game. That young man was going to have an emotional night. <laughs> he was. He is active so far. Four points. Yeah. He missed a couple of bunnies, but seven boards. And that's a huge, huge factor that Rick Barnes has been counting on. And I, I like that word, use active, because yeah. watching him in the half-court offense, you can see him. He's kind of posting up. He's kind of moving around. He, he got an elbow jump shot, which is he can make that shot. He got out in transition, finishing the lane. So I, I think when there's so many scoring options for Tennessee, when he's no. on the floor with Schofield, Williams, Lamonte Turner, Jordan Bone, oh. I mean, you know, where do your shots come from, right? right? So you're just sort of looking to see where it is you can fit in when there's a double team somewhere. They'll kick to you for a jump shot. So, I mean, he's doing a great job. You can tell he was frustrated in that he's Kentucky a, game, even though they sure. won big. He's starting to, to show it out And tonight. they'll need him. Uh, we got a lot more games to show you, so let's go ahead and get you a highlight. Kentucky, Ole Miss, and how about this? Ole Miss has won or lost, rather, the last nine meetings between those two squads and trying to change it up. Terrence Davis, Bruce Stevens, among those honored on senior night. Early Davis, early going Davis, rather, grabs a rebound, goes coast to coast. I'll put Ole Miss up three early. Made it look easy right there. See the little swing right there? But that's what Ole Miss will do. They'll get out quick before the defense sets and get some open, easy layup. Tyler Hero with the swiper, no swiping move. That's it's so the impressive. On the other end. See that left-handed inside-out move, but still has the balance and the strength in his legs to go up and get a nice soft touch. How about Keldon Johnson? A lot of people talk about him, one of the freshmen of the year. Steal and the slam. That would put them up by eight at this point, but. Ole Miss, they're not going to go away quietly, my friend. Terrence Davis, who's having quite the senior night, getting it done, getting that crowd rocking and rolling. Two minutes left in the half, 39-36. All right, how about Avery Johnson and the Crimson Tide looking to strengthen their tournament resume. Bama, early seven-point lead, nearly a turnover, but Kyra Lewis Jr. stays with it and gets it out to Dante Hall. Big man. Knocks it down. Well, that dude's been having an all-SEC type of season, Dante Hall. He's a walking double-double. He's one of the most consistent players now in the SEC. Riley Norris says, nope. All right, give it to me one more time. <laughs> there. Buck. Six man of the year right there. What do you think? Riley Norris is He's got the, the glue man. Oh, yeah. You're going to do that. Ten-point game. Herb Jones. Strong move. Herb Jones is a guy when he can we get a lot of guys in the SEC where they you give it to them that top of the key yep. there's one dribble straight to the rim Herb Jones is one PJ Washington's another Grant Williams another Admiral Schofield at another Schofield and another <laughs> one. Well, we of them at the break <laughs> Money is like life. You have to decide how to get the most from it. So we made you some simple free tools to help you see how what you do today will affect your tomorrow. Which means you can make smart choices about how to spend your money and your life. Home sweet home. Your sanctuary. You know you need to protect it with home security. But traditional alarm companies have made things so complicated, you just keep putting it on the bottom of your list. Simply Safe is changing that with an arsenal of sensors and cameras designed to blanket you with protection, ready to set up right out of the box. So put home security back on the top of your list with Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com for a limited time offer. It means sacrifice, and not just for my family and friends, but for everybody. It's doing research that'll really help people.
putting in the hours, pushing myself so I can be a better teammate. Knowing that the work I do today isn't just for me. Being a Tennessee volunteer means giving light to others, giving your all, and I love that I get to be a part of that. Everyone knows the general for his affordable auto insurance. And everyone knows Shaq as a basketball Hall of Famer. But I bet you didn't know we're competitive head trimmers. Perfection. Impressive. Check out mine. You've also mastered the art of meditation. Om. Or a great low ray. So those weren't your strong suits. <laughs> but at least you're great at providing coverage to people who've let their insurance lapse. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. Don't give in now. This is your final push. Let's go, Peloton. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome job today, guys. A killer workout right at home. Just one part of the best cardio machine on the planet, Peloton. This is a pair of Warby Parker glasses. They start at $95, including prescription lenses. Right now, we're watching them go through a hinge test, which is used to test the, well, you get it. Try five pairs for free at warbyparker.com. Move over, Red Panda. Move over, Quick oh, Change. We got the Sky Riders in the building. He's forgot one thing, though. Oh, no. I, 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 is the this snow. an ACL? He's got skis indoors. What's wrong with this guy? All right. Hey, that's fine. You get it done. Beach his own, huh? Look, Ma, he's doing it. <laughs> he needs to do it with plates like Red Panda. That would be even awesome. Uh, how about this? South Carolina, Texas A&M in College Station. No guys on skis, but guys playing with the basketball on a hard court. In transition, Chris Silva trying to get it done. Top of the key, making it rain. Come on now. You 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 didn't know he could step into that trail three-point shot? No, I honestly did not. Not like that. <laughs> Keyshawn Bryant over to Josh, finding Nebo for the monster dunk. That young kid has played huge all year. He's athletic, and when he gets out in transition, nobody is stopping him. Savion Flag has to play big with no TJ Does. Starks, right? Moments later, same score. Chris Collins, cross-court pass. The flag hits it. Back-to-back -back threes, cut the lead to four. Second half, South Carolina up eight. Silva, you said he's got some range. I'm telling you, but he, see how he catches it with confidence? He steps back. He's got really good balance. Catch and shoot, no hesitation. Once again right there, see... The, the, the decisiveness and, and uh, the pass is right on the money helps him make that shot. Gamecocks trying to get it done. Kendall Mitchell trying to keep them in it. Later, South Carolina 15. Oh my goodness. Oop to Silva and that's just too easy. Yeah, you can throw just about anywhere right there, but that's over the top and a lot, you know, A&M's defense. How do you not recognize what Chris Silva is all the time? How about Hassani Gravit? He'd have 17 points, eight assists. Gamecocks go on to win 71 to 54, putting South Carolina right there in sole possession of that four spot, which again is huge because you get the double buy for next week's SEC men's tournament. Right now in Knoxville though, how about those balls, they got a six point lead. Kyle Alexander dunking on people like ball Twitter on Dan Wolkin. More coming up after the break. I enjoyed drawing and designing things and wasn't 100% sure what architecture would be like in school. But once I got here to LSU and kind of got a semester of it under my belt, I realized it's exactly what I wanted to be doing. They really helped uh, sort of adapt the schedule to help me be able to do both football and architecture. With football, you're not going to get anywhere unless you've got a great work ethic, a great attitude, and it's the same with architecture. It was a tough road, but uh, worth every step. Pain thinks it can overpower you, overwhelm you. It obviously doesn't know you. Icy hot. Icy is a dull, hot to relax. Are you gonna let pain stop you? I didn't think so. Icy hot, rise from pain. Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, Phil, are you guys good with brakes? We're okay. Just okay? We got a saying here. The brakes don't stop it, something will. That's not a real saying. It is around here. I wrote it. Just okay is not okay, especially when it comes to your network. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. Now with 5G evolution, the first step to 5G. More for your thing. That's our thing.
For drug-free sinus relief, experience Navage, the next big thing in nasal care. Navage is the only nose cleaner with powered suction to pull refreshing saline rinse in one nostril and out the other. Navage relieves congestion from allergies and colds naturally by flushing out allergens, mucus, dust, and germs. I used to get so congested, but Navage cleans out all the stuff that makes me miserable so I can breathe again. Now at CVS and Navage.com, you'll love that clean nose feeling. Women's tournament gets going tomorrow. How about that for those watching this game too? 10:30 uh, a.m. Eastern is when we will have that coverage. Alyssa Langnell, Fortner, and Andy Landers. But hey, if Tennessee beats LSU in that second round, we could see a quarterfinal matchup of these two teams we are watching right now. Bulldogs trying to get something done. Tyson Carter has been fantastic since he's been putting that starting lineup. But Bulldogs down six in that great. In the South. There's a zest for life that's unrivaled. From family gatherings to football games, we enjoy good food, great fun, and warm hospitality. And we always do it with style. For generations, Belk has been a Southern staple, helping families celebrate life. In fact, we've been around about as long as college football. Belk, celebrating 130 years of modern Southern style. You work hard to build a better life and a better world. Now you can do both. By ditching your big bank and switching to Aspiration, you'll get cash back on every dollar you spend and extra rewards for shopping at businesses with a conscience. And Aspiration trusts you to pay only the fee you think we deserve, even if it's zero. So use any ATM in the world for free. Switch at Aspiration.com. Save money, save the planet. To know I'm getting the best deal, so I shop around. She shops and compares everything. I do. Appliances, flights, shoes, meats and cheeses. Literally everything. Before I married Dave, I probably dated hundreds of guys. Hundreds of guys. That's why I go to LendingTree.com for any kind of loan. They make lenders compete for your business. You know the difference between these two rates? $24,000. When you say hundreds of guys, you mean closer to like nine, right? Nope. LendingTree. May the best loan win. Selling your house is hard. From prep to open houses to hoping for offers. But what if you could sell your house in just a few days with no hassle? Now you can with Simple Sale from Homelight. Just answer a few quick questions about your house. We'll collect offers from our network of cash buyers and introduce you to the highest bidder. Now, Selling is simple. To see your simple sale price, go to homelight.com slash simple today. Boy, that flame looks so nice on a frigid night here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Rolled into town, temperatures were in the 20s. Still a little chilly outside. Dave Neal alongside Dane Bradshaw. It's we have 20 minutes of basketball in the books. And Shirley, you're looking at the top scoring team in the conference in Tennessee and the fourth ranked scoring team in Mississippi State, but yet our score doesn't really reflect that. What were your thoughts on the first 20 minutes? Just sloppy play. These are two teams that typically take care of the basketball, but 10 turnovers from Mississippi State, a lot of them unforced, and then eight turnovers for Tennessee. Neither of these teams were fluid offensively. And, you know, you can attribute some of that to the fact that it was an emotional night here for Tennessee to get this game started as Admiral Schofield, Kyle Alexander, among others, being honored on senior night, his final home game. Tears flowing down his face, certainly, and we were wondering how would that impact it? Well, 
Dane, it didn't take him very long to get involved in this game tonight. It helps when that first shot goes in, and the first thing Admiral Schofield put up was a jumper, and it was money. And from that point on, the crowd was into it. He was into it. But this is just a normal day at the office for Admiral Schofield. I mean, whether it's senior night or the first game of the year, 10th game of the year, it doesn't matter. I mean, Admiral Schofield brings his A game no matter what night it is. Schofield with 11 points and a couple of three-pointers. And his senior counterpart, Kyle Alexander, who played 14 minutes, had four points and seven rebounds, and that rebounding total tops on his team. On the flip side, looking for Quindary Weatherspoon to get it cranked up, just five points. Remember, he and Williams are the top two scorers in this conference. Williams played only seven minutes and had two points. And if I'm Mississippi State, I'm going down low to a do and see if you can't pick up a third on Grant Williams. I mean, Tennessee is a different team when they don't have their duo on the court at the same time, Williams and Schofield. And Mississippi State goes big here in the second half. Adu, Woodard, and Perry get the start. Three big boys. Lamar Peters starts the second half on the bench for Mississippi State. And Schofield with an easy lay in on the other end. And another turnover for Mississippi State. A sloppy pass by Weatherspoon. And then... As my coach used to tell me, bail the passer out. Even if it's a bad pass, figure out a way to catch it so it doesn't lead to a live ball turnover. Did you do that very well? Or did you get yelled at a lot for that? No, I was the passer. I do bail me <laughs> yeah. out, man. Guys, bail you coach. out. <laughs> Woodard hangs in the air, lays it up off the window. Turner hitting Schofield. Admiral. No good. There's Williams. Just sneaky good at getting position. Well, and inside shots lead to inside rebounds, and that all starts with Admiral Schofield's penetration. Weatherspoon must show more resistance on defense. Gundary. Back to Carter. That won't go. Rebound Alexander. Turner. Schofield bobbled the pass, but will find Bo. Perry the rebound. Tennessee, three out of 14 from behind the arc. Make it three out of 15. And Lamar Peters not starting the second half for Mississippi State. He is at the scorer's table, but that's another guy that they, they just have to get some production out of. He's a pass-first point guard, but he does so much for them scoring. He's got to get going. Enough. Bulldogs don't get back, and Alexander throws it down for his second dunk of the night. Bulldogs will take a timeout. That is one thing that will frustrate Ben Howland is not getting back on defense. He'll talk about it. Ten point Tennessee lead. We'll sprint the floor in transition. Kyle Alexander on senior night. This is as easy of a two point field goal as he'll have in his career. But credit the big man running the floor, getting rewarded. For drug-free sinus relief, experience Navage, the next big thing in nasal care. Navage is the only nose cleaner with powered suction to pull refreshing saline rinse in one nostril and out the other. Navage relieves congestion from allergies and colds naturally by flushing out allergens, mucus, dust, and germs. I used to get so congested, but Navage cleans out all the stuff that makes me miserable so I can breathe again. Now at CVS and Navage.com, you'll love that clean nose feeling. The iPhone XR is a marvel in technology. Yeah. This edge-to-edge -edge screen is unbelievable. Am I nuts or does everything look better on an iPhone? Both. <laughs> and with our unlimited plan, people can choose the best in entertainment. HBO, Cinemax, Showtime. Stars, Verve, Amazon Music, or Pandora. Now, now people, people can, can get, get what they, they want. want. Because, because everyone's different. different. I, I feel, feel like we shouldn't, shouldn't talk, talk for a couple of days. days. AT&T has the only unlimited plan that gives you your choice of top-tier entertainment. Get an iPhone XR on us when you buy the latest iPhone. More for your thing. That's our thing. Every time you swipe your card, your big bank is likely hurting the planet and your wallet. 
unfair fees, your deposits funding oil drills and pipelines, you can do better. Make the switch from your big bank to Aspiration. Aspiration helps you spend and save with a conscience. With Aspiration, you'll pay zero fees at every ATM in the world, all while keeping your money safe and fossil fuel free. Join the nearly 1 million Americans who are making the move to save money and save the planet. Go to Aspiration.com. Look at the Tennessee River on a cold night here in Knoxville. Tennessee leads it by 10. A couple of seniors being honored before the game, and Kyle Alexander and Admiral Schofield. Dane Bradshaw had a, can a chance to catch up with them and revisit back to their opening days here on campus. Schofield, Kyle Alexander on senior night, two terrific guys that have come a long way. Well, we're going to take them down memory lane real quick to just show how far they've come. All right, you're first, Admiral. Fun fact, UNC Asheville, your freshman year, your first three-pointer. Do you remember this? Look at him running the court, spotting up. Oh, he feels good. He feels good. Oh, with the sleeve. <laughs> a little long. But wait, wait, wait. Don't laugh too hard. This is your boy Kyle right now. Oh, I he, remember he's, this. He, he's posting up strong. He's trying to get physical. A, a lot of people shot. say, what, what, what? Yeah. Right, right. Nobody's ever done the uh, going over the right shoulder with the right hand oh, move. Oh, this one right here. Check your boy out. He's going to be. He gets hard. That, that's a Kevin just down low for South Carolina. He's demanding the ball. Let me back down and. <laughs> this is actually my favorite here. Admiral Schofield as a screener. This is, dang, man. That, that's a flavor oh too God. back in the day. But fast forward. Oh, yeah. That's probably your most memorable yeah. one, right? And, and then <laughs> clumsy no longer. Look at this gazelle running the court here with the dunk beating everybody down the floor. So, what do you think, man? How's he come since his freshman year? I mean, it's made it's tremendous yeah, just you know, on the floor, but mostly off the floor as a person and you know, to come as a player, it's just been amazing to watch. Yeah, you say a bunch of guys. What he's had to go through since he's got here as a freshman, I mean, losing the weight, earning the yeah. respect, I mean, he's been through so much here. I mean, I learned a lot from him, so. Well, you guys have led the way. As Coach Barnes said, these guys laid the foundation. Admiral Schofield, Kyle Alexander, two terrific seniors. Enjoyed. Visiting with those guys today, I know you did too, and uh, just uh, a couple of really solid young men right there, and Admiral Schofield and Kyle Alexander. As I said before, Admiral Schofield, there may be some better players to come through Tennessee, but when you look at the all-time top 10 favorite players and most memorable, likable, Admiral Schofield is going to be on that list for Tennessee fans. Since State pulled within one at 26-25, Tennessee has now outscored the Bulldogs 13-2 over the last six and a half minutes. And Dave, what did Howland tell us earlier today? He said, look, it all starts with our defense, and I get that, but we got to get our offense going. That was his biggest concern against Auburn. Weatherspoon, boy, he makes that shot just about every night. But not this evening, speaking of shots you make about every night, Perry can't get it to go down, and it sails out of bounds. That's the kind of night it's been for the Bulldogs. Timeout on the floor. Home sweet home. Your sanctuary. You know you need to protect it with home security. But traditional alarm companies have made things so complicated, you just keep putting it on the bottom of your list. Simply Safe is changing that with an arsenal of sensors and cameras designed to blanket you with protection, ready to set up right out of the box. So put home security back on the top of your list with Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com for a limited time offer. Hey, look, they got one of those purple mattresses. I've heard about these. It's supposed to sleep cool and it's specially designed to cradle your pressure points. Huh? Freeze! Good look inside Thompson Bowling Arena. 
not quite filled to the rafters tonight like it was over the weekend, but certainly another exceptional crowd considering a 9 o'clock start here local time. They have watched this Tennessee team build a 12-point advantage. Tennessee 14-2 in conference play, chasing down back-to-back -back regular season championships. Of course, split it last year with Auburn. But you see the numbers for this team. Their net rank is fourth. Projected as a number two seed right now. But this is a team certainly capable of a final four run. You know, LSU the way they have been playing. And we know Kentucky certainly, if they can get healthy and get their little swagger back, I think they got punched in the gut here this weekend. Yeah, and, and Tennessee was preseason projected number five. And myself included, I thought that was a little bit too high to have that big of expectations, the target on your back. But they handled it extremely well, got to number one in the country, and then they took that dip where I thought it was a good wake-up call for them. I, but outside of them just not playing as well, I thought the schedule got so much tougher for them as the season went on. When you talk about at LSU, at Kentucky, but they've, they've bounced back well. This is a very mature team, and I think that experience and the maturity and leadership they have is why many feel they are a Final Four contender. And this has not been a year where there's been one team across the country that you just say, oh, they're untouchable, that nobody, nobody's going to get them. They're the clear favorite. Schofield lost the handle. Fulkerson, though, will have it. Shot clock reset. on the shot clock. Well, you start looking at both these teams and the trajectory. Both these coaches now in their fourth years at these schools, and they have both been on an upward trend. Mississippi State was ranked for 13 weeks this year. As Fulkerson goes for the left hand, throw down. Right. Reminds you of a similar play that Jordan Bowden brought the house down at Vanderbilt. They love that out-of-bounds lob play. Tennessee. Trying to continue their push here as their lead is now up to 14. It was six at halftime. Grant Williams. Boy, Tennessee just wants it more right now. You're right, the energy is not there for Mississippi State, and no excuses, but on the road at Auburn on Saturday, a quick turnaround for on the road at a hot Tennessee team. They've got to find a muster up some energy and effort. Right now, they're allowing their offensive woes to dictate their defensive intensity. Bulldogs have missed seven straight from the field. Count to basket, Peters. You must first watch basket. the lob. Excuse me, Dave, you must watch the lob on the out-of-bounds play, and. Fulke getting up high to throw it down. The slam cam. I, I never got on a replay with the slam cam. <laughs> well, I was, I was maybe on there, but I was never the one with the ball in my hand for sure. Well, you had to have a couple of dunks in there somewhere. Along the way. You know, I, I, had, I had one dunk in college career. <laughs> Not a day goes by somebody <laughs> doesn't stop me and say, hey, were you that guy in that Coppin State game? <laughs> the non-conference that threw one down? At least you had one. <laughs> Turner. Weatherspoon bats it around, but Tennessee can't hold on to it. It'll still belong to the Vols. 11 on the shot clock. Well, you see Grant Williams and Rick Barnes talking. I mean, Grant Williams is over there telling Rick Barnes what play they should run. When you have that coach on the floor and that coach-player trust and relationship, it makes all the difference in the world. Turner, step back, no good. There's Williams again, outstanding position on the baseline. It'll belong to Tennessee again. Well, that is their 13th offensive rebound. Hey, starting on Wednesday, SEC Now will be at Bon Secor's Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina, for pre- and post-game coverage of all the women's tournament games. Alyssa, Andy, and Nell will have you covered, plus former South Carolina All-American Asia Wilson joins our coverage on Friday. SEC Now can also be seen on the ESPN app.
Williams. I'm going to call a foul underneath on Woodard. If I'm not mistaken, that was Tennessee's fourth field goal attempt in that possession. I mean, offensive rebound after offensive rebound. And Tennessee had been great themselves on the defensive glass, but Mississippi State right now, as Adu gets set to check in for them, they need some muscle down low and somebody that's going to make a presence, keep Tennessee to one shot only on the offensive end. Grant Williams, SEC Player of the Week, knocks home that first free throw. Williams with five points, five rebounds. Williams rolls that one in. The young man trying to become the first to win the Player of the Year award in this conference in back-to-back -back season since Arkansas's Corliss Williamson did it in 94 and 95. Allen Houston, a former Tennessee Vol, did that as well. With the rebound, here comes Lamonte Turner for the ball movement. And his possession rather quick as Johnson knocks home that three. Just like that, it is a 19-point game. It was six at the break. Yeah, it was 29-25. Lamonte Turner hits the layup going into halftime, and Tennessee has not looked back. Rebound, Fulkerson. I mean, Mississippi State is missing some point blank shots. Yeah, Tennessee's playing okay defensively, but they've got to make some of these open threes, open layups. Eric Holman will be called for a hold on Schofield. Well, you see Lamar Peters in that shot. He is a frustrated young man heading back to the bench. Just two points for Lamar, one of seven from the field. Johnson will try it again. Too strong. Carter. Woodard. Got it. Really nice job. Tyson Carter, drive, draw, dish. And he's come to play tonight. And right now is a time where if Quindary Weatherspoon's a first-team All-SEC candidate type player, you want him kind of commanding the ball on offense. See if he can't rally the troops. Woodard with a foul. Dave, there was a great story on Jordan Bowden earlier. I'll make fun of him a little bit. Talking to Burt Bertelkamp, UT legend, of course, and does color on the radio for the Vols. And he was talking about how far these guys have come. And he said, watching Rick Barnes in practice in his first year, and they're running a play called Basin. And Jordan Bowden was messing it up. And he goes, Jordan, you realize what the word basic means, right? Like, this is as simple of a play as we got. If you can't run basic, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a long long career for you but uh, i'd say bowden has figured that out and uh this is a guy that you know interestingly enough last year's sixth man of the year in the sec lamonte turner takes his starting spot and all jordan bowden does is go to six man off the bench where he could certainly be six man of the year in the conference bowden has hit double figures tonight now has 10 points Monte Turner lost the handle. Up ahead to Carter. Woodard, he's fouled. He'll be knocked to the floor. Alexander or Williams will pick up the foul. Let's see who gets it. It'll be against Kyle Alexander. But it's an 18 point lead for the Vols, 11.50 to play. First tattoo? Yeah. Relax, amigo. It's going to look okay. Only okay? No worries, boss. I'm one of the tattoo artists in the city. You mean one of the best tattoo artists in the city, right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, aren't you supposed to draw it first? Stay in your lane, bro. 
Just okay is not okay, especially when it comes to your network. AT&T is America's best wireless network, according to America's biggest test. Buy a new Samsung Galaxy S10 and get one free. If we make a mistake here, we just do it over. Retirement planning, you might not get a second chance. Personal Capital can help. Get all these free tools, plus this free guide, at personalcapital.com slash TV. Well, the SEC Men's Basketball Tournament early round games will be right here on the SEC Network. Coverage begins on Wednesday, March 13th with both first round games. Thursday, second round games and Friday's quarterfinals will also be on the SEC Network. Then the semifinals and championship move to ESPN for the weekend. You can also watch every game on the ESPN app. And right now, this is what uh, Joe Lenardi has in terms of the SEC teams heading to postseason play. Eight schools. Alabama and Auburn going at it right now, and regardless if Alabama loses to that game, Joe still has them in the tournament. Uh, but a pretty good selection of teams trying to match last year's eight teams that went to the NCAA tournament. Well, the quality of those top seeds and the opportunity to have multiple Final Four runs. To start the season, you thought it was Kentucky, Tennessee, Auburn, both, all three of them ranked in the preseason top ten, and LSU has kind of taken Auburn's place, but uh, the Tigers still Auburn trying to catch their stride. And Alabama what? leading Auburn right now 43-31 and Ole Miss is leading Kentucky 53-50. Wow. How about that? And when you start the season and people thought there could be eight teams in the, SEC, or in the NCAA tournament, to me that included Missouri with John Tay Porter, first round draft pick, and Vanderbilt, Darius Garland, a lottery pick both those guys get hurt their seasons go a completely different direction and yet the league is still talking about eight teams and yeah one of the reasons is the guy Kermit Davis at Ole Miss you just mentioned currently leading Kentucky Woodard knocks home the free throw a 63 percent foul shooter Gets his own miss, goes up strong, is fouled, and will head back to the free throw line. There's the effort play that Ben Howland and company were looking for. And 13 offensive rebounds for Mississippi State. So, you know, if this is your first time seeing the Bulldogs, they, they are a much better team than they're showing tonight. I mean, very sloppy, but they are more than competent on the offensive end, especially from the three point line where they have just been really ice cold four for 13 and the leading scorer in SEC play Quindary Weatherspoon held to just five points on two of ten Bulldogs were ranked as high as number 14 earlier this year Meanwhile, this Tennessee team of course ranked number one for four weeks currently ranked number five in the country but a net ranking of number four Tennessee also, they've won 25 straight inside Thompson Bowling Arena going back to last year. Williams spins and can't get it to drop. If I'm not mistaken, it was the 07 08 team, the last team to go undefeated at home in a season. It's the same team that also got number one in the country. Up ahead, Bone, who was fouled by Weatherspoon. When this ball goes up, Tennessee can get out and go, and Mississippi State has nobody back. Weatherspoon trying to give a good hard foul without getting anybody hurt. Jordan Bone going to have to earn him at the stripe. And how good was Jordan Bone in that win against Kentucky? Just the star of the show, five for five from three. His best performance of the year. You know, it is watching Bone in person. You really get an appreciation for what he does and what he is as a point guard. Truly a talented, super talented player. When he was recruited here, and when you first laid eyes on him, you thought this could be the best natural point guard for Tennessee since C.J. Watson. And they've still had some good ones come through. Bobby Mays helped lead him to an Elite Eight. And 
first couple years, Jordan Bone, he just wasn't there yet. And, man, he has really taken off this season. I think a big part of it was when Lamonte Turner got hurt. Bone was never looking over his shoulder. It became his team at the point guard. He got more minutes under Rick Barnes, and he has thrived and not looked back. Williams with a follow. With Ben Howland calling another timeout. Fifty three thirty three our score with ten forty two to go in this one a six point game at the break. It's always fun to play the old if the tournament started game if the tournament started today and this is what it would look like. And of course some things can certainly turn with one more weekend of action coming up but the first day would feature Georgia Missouri Vandy and Texas A&M. Where the quarterfinals would be an interesting day of hoops with some talented teams. Right now, South Carolina with a half game lead. There were five teams at nine and seven coming into today. South Carolina wins to push their record in conference play to 10 and seven. That is the most amazing part to me is South Carolina with a double buy opportunity. They have had so many injuries all season long. I think. After that win tonight, they're now 500, 15 and 15 on the year, yet 10 and 7 in conference play. And their next game is a home game against Georgia, a team with only two SEC wins. So they very well could get that double bye. The job Frank Martin has done, especially in conference play. And to finish this out, A.J. Lawson, their top scorer, out with an ankle injury. Man, I, I would have never seen South Carolina as the number four seed when conference play began. They beat Texas A&M 71-54. Chris Silver with 22 points, career high 17 rebounds. And I think one of the most shocking things we saw from Silva, he hit four out of four from behind the arc tonight. <laughs> Good for him. He hadn't taken too many threes this year, but he's taken more than he ever has in his career. And Pat Bradley and those guys alluded to. He likes that trailer three. He can knock that down. And as a big man, if you hit that first one, your coach is usually okay with you taking the second. Then you just got to keep testing. Got to get yourself at the final home game of the season. Mississippi State will be anxious to get back home to wrap up the regular season. They've had a tough two-game road swing at Auburn and here in Knoxville. Well, let's not forget Auburn had about a 20-point lead close to it in the Bulldogs came within five down the stretch before Auburn pulled away. So they've got to come back in them, but right now it's got to start with their energy and effort on the defensive end. Williams. He's fouled on the way up, and he'll head to the free throw line. Boy, you see the frustration. Abdul Adu, I think he is voicing the opinion of many of his Bulldog teammates right now. That's the kind of night it's been, really, the second half in particular. This may be one of those, if you're Ben Howland, that you say, look, we know what to work on in practice, but we're going to burn the tape on this one and try to move on mentally and get ready for Saturday, see if you can't close it out strong so you have some momentum heading into the SEC tournament. Tennessee has won 14 conference games. 11 of those have been double-digit margin of victories. His second. Lamar Peters will head to the free throw line. Peters picked up two quick fouls in this game. And they really knocked him out of sync. He had to sit on the bench for a while, but Ben Howland still put him back in with two fouls and played five or six minutes down the stretch of that first half. Well, what's really important for Mississippi State is that their roster doesn't get so consumed in 
I got to get myself going or I got to get mine. It's got to start with we and the team. How do we get going? Because if you start worrying about yourself, it's only going to get worse. Alexander can't hold on to it. Tennessee shooting 43% from the field. Mississippi State at 29%. They are 13 out of 45. Peters, tough shot. Get it to go. Grant Williams on the floor, and it'll be a tie up. Arrow does favor Tennessee, however. Dave, this is why so many love this Tennessee team. They don't play the scoreboard. You know, they're up 18 comfortably, and their star player, most likely. Back-to-back -back SEC player of the year, Grant Williams, is still diving on the floor. When I watch this Tennessee team, it doesn't matter if they're down 10 or up 10, they are playing with the same intensity all game long. Schofield working on Holman. That won't drop. Here's Peters. Tough pass hit Holman right in the shins. I mean, Holman points at his chest and says, my bad, but I think he's being generous. <laughs> that was a tough one to handle there. It's worth noting, Nick Witherspoon, their starting point guard, suspended right now for Mississippi State. Unknown when, if he'll come back. But can't help but think that would solve some of those turnover woes, get them in rhythm offensively that they're lacking right now. Bone throws that away. That is the 11th Tennessee turnover. Tennessee will wrap up their regular season at Auburn at noon Eastern time on Saturday. Alexander with the rebound. That is number 10. Last time Alexander had 10 plus rebounds. That came at Missouri when he had a career best 17 back in early January. Williams. Ooh, that's tough right there. Taking a big man off the bounce. Spin move. Not been a huge night for Williams, but been a productive one. 12 points for Grant and eight rebounds. Williams blocks that shot. Bout trying to throw it down and got it to roll through the cylinder. See, that's where I'm frustrated if I'm Ben Howland. It's an equal opportunity fast break, really, for transition defense. And two guys from Mississippi State are still not even past half court while that play's going on. Woodard in and out, tapped around. Holman can't get it to go down. Six and a half to play. Eric Holman with that rebound. He now has six boards, just two points tonight. Dave, going back to that win against Ole Miss, Tennessee had, I thought that was one of the most important victories they had all season. It allowed them to get their swagger back. And now they're playing some of their best basketball of the season, despite a sloppy one tonight. 
Hey, when we come back, we'll break these numbers down. See who Dane thinks should be the SEC Player of the Year. It's all coming up when we return to Thompson Bowling Arena. Soda SEC Fanfare. SEC's basketball celebration returns to Nashville at the Music City Walk of Fame Park. Enjoy three days of live music and interactive games, steps from the tournament action. Join us March 14th through the 16th. No, definitely not. No, no, no. Hello, the general. Low cost auto insurance with low payments, choice of payment due date, and immediate proof of insurance. Yes! Don't settle for a loser. Get your anonymous online quote with low payments and ride with the Generals. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time! Wireless for 15 bucks a month. <laughs> that's not right. It's right, all right. Now, Chunky Style Milk, that's not right. I choose Chunky Style Milk because it has the wholesome chunks growing kids need, unlike Smooth Style Milk. Hey, guys. Save some chunks for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not right. Neither is the way you get wireless. Mint Mobile took what's wrong with wireless and made it right. We're easy, online, and just 15 bucks a month. Get your plan today at mintmobile.com. Out of bounds, alley -oop. Time to take a look at tonight's Good Hands play brought to you by Allstate. When you use a shooter as a screener, as Tennessee does with Admiral Schofield, it makes it that much harder to switch or help off. And that opens up a huge alley-oop opportunity for Fulkerson. Well, Fulkerson's dunk has helped Tennessee to a 22-point advantage, 6.06 to play. And before we went to break, we were looking at some numbers on individuals who are certainly candidates for the SEC Player of the Year. And who do those numbers belong to? Those are pretty impressive numbers. Which one stands out to you, yeah. the 19-3, 7-6, and 3-3? Yeah, I like the final one just based on the numbers, but I, see, I gotta see the player. I gotta know what the intangibles are before I come to a conclusion, but there you go. P.J. Washington, Tremont Waters, Grant Williams, all with sensational seasons, and Dave, before the season started, I was so close to voting as P.J. Washington as my preseason player of the year because of how well he played against Grant Williams last season. But I wasn't sure about how consistent his motor was. And yes, he's come on really strong late in the year. He's been terrific. But because of the consistency that Grant Williams has played with, and I think that last game against Kentucky to where P.J. Washington didn't dominate both matchups, they split head to head, uh, I give the edge to Grant Williams. Plus, he's, he's had to have that target on his back all season long. I think he's carried it extremely well. Foul on Lamonte Turner as Carter attempted the three-pointer. Admiral Schofield getting everything out of his final minutes in Thompson Bowling Arena. Guy that's just been an absolute machine for Tennessee. The way he's put in the work not only on his shot but on his body the way that's transformed and then coaches often say about who helped build their foundation and their cornerstone for them it's no exaggeration about that young man Admiral Schofield he'll be remembered forever at Tennessee and he has set the standard for new recruits as they come in knowing exactly what Rick Barnes expects I mean, not only has he helped change his program, look what he has done physically to change his look as well over the last four years. That is nuts. At this point in my life, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity for me to be a before model. <laughs> <laughs> Just find me somebody that looks like me, a little better shape. I'll give you a before picture right away. Bad pass by Williams, here's Weatherspoon in the open floor. He will throw it down. Quinn Derry now with seven points.
even after the dunk. Still a frustrating night for Quindary. Seven turnovers as well tonight. It does not change my mind about him being the best natural scorer in the league. He's had an off night. My concern for Mississippi State is Quindary Weatherspoon is a quiet guy. So who's the vocal leader on this team? In the locker room, on the bus, on the plane, to keep this team together? Because the coach can't do it all himself. You've got to have that presence inside the locker room. And right now, I, I don't know who that guy is. So Williams will head to the free throw line, and we talked about it's kind of been a quiet night for him, but now with 13 points, I mean, it's it, it has been a quiet night, but he's going to, I mean, he has a chance for a double-double. He's sitting at 13 and 8. Yeah, about 33% of his points come from the free throw line. And of course, that memorable performance at Vanderbilt, 23 for 23 from the strike. Done a nice job again, just keeping himself out of foul trouble on the court despite playing extremely aggressive and physical. Six out of six at the line tonight. Perry working hard, he'll be fouled. And that one will go against Derek Walker. That'll be his first and the sixth team foul. Dave, there are some impressive freshmen in this league. Nas Reed, of course, Kentucky's got there. Nas Reed at LSU, Emmett Williams at LSU, Javante Smart also at LSU, and Reggie Perry has a career ahead of him. I mean, that is a young man to be excited about for Bulldog fans. He is an absolute beast down low. When you think about going up against Schofield, Williams, and I mean, he hadn't been intimidated one bit. In fact, he's been winning the rebound battle. Was a 2018 McDonald's All-American, five-star recruit, Schofield. Knocks home another three, that is his third tonight. Give him 18 points. Under four to play, Weatherspoon throws it to George Brooks on that Mississippi State bench. Problem is George is in a suit as an assistant coach. All Tennessee. I think I found my dream car. It turns out they want me to start next month. She can stay with you to finish her senior year. Things will be tight, but we can make this work. Now. Grandpa, what about your dream car? This is my dream now. <laughs> Principal, we can help you plan for that. A hand-breaded filet with sweet honey butter and smoky bacon. Introducing the new honey butter and bacon filet sandwich for a limited time, only at Zaxby's. And don't miss Shazam. Shazam! Experience it in IMAX. Support your favorite college at Fanatics.com, the largest assortment of officially licensed fan gear from more than 500 colleges. Every conference, every team. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Senior night, Admiral Schofield's played a lot of ball in this building. His final game tonight, he's put on quite a show. Yeah, it was early and often for him, and not many of his points have really been in the paint. It's been all jump shots. But, man, when you can rely on that jumper, whether it be from three or mid-range, he's showing you why. He's one of the top players in the country for Tennessee. Schofield came in averaging 16 points a game. He's at 18. He's hit three threes, has four rebounds, and 31 minutes 18 to 9. He'd had 18 total in his previous two games. So he's getting that offense cranked back up. Dave, when you wear that number five at Tennessee, I mean, it, it comes with a, a standard. I mean, Jarnell Stokes wore it before, and my former teammate Chris Lofton. Chris Lofton, you know, I mean, you wear that number five like, like he did. It, you better have extreme work ethic, make some shots. 
never pass, be cheap, never pick up a tab. I mean, those are the types of things. <laughs> never that, pick that up come, a tab. That comes with player number five. I, I'm not going to let that slide. I hey. caught that. Never pick up a tab. That, yeah, you don't play defense. Don't pass to your teammates. <laughs> let me guess. All you those talk things. To you about your buddy Chris yeah, Lofton. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I think he's overseas uh, somewhere. He's probably sleeping right now. I, I'm, I'm good at talking about a man that can't defend himself. Boy, he was something else. Chris Lofton, watch him shoot the three. Oh. Again, those, those are some of those underdog stories that t these Tennessee fans have really appreciated over the years. Chris Lofton, I remember, man, that guy comes in and he had just finished a recruiting visit to Valparaiso in Arkansas Little Rock. And he actually came in, let me tell you, Chris Lofton, he looked like trash early on. I mean, he was not good. We were over there laughing like, man, Mr. Basketball in Kentucky had a down year this year. And the next thing you know, <laughs> no, we're getting right. slid down further and yeah. further down the bench for this six-foot kid that's slow and you don't think can get his shot off. And SEC three-point records later. This guy will get his jersey retired before it's all said and done. Fought through some cancer yep. issues as well. Quick basket by the Bulldogs as we approach three minutes left to play in this one. You know who's feeling really good right now? Cheering on Tennessee and hoping for perfect defense and perfect offense. We've got a couple walk-ons right now that are seniors that would love nothing else <laughs> to get in this game. Brad Woodson and Lucas Campbell also honored on senior night. Looks like Bowden, Williams, and Fulkerson will check in. I'm trying to decide if Admiral Schofield, I guess he was walking towards the bench, but they're going to give him a little more run. Kyle Alton will get his ovation. finishes with 18 points. And the other ovation is for the two other seniors, the walk-ons that are on the floor now for Tennessee and Brad Woodson and Lucas Campbell. Let me tell you something, these walk-ons mean quite a bit to this program. Their consistent work ethic, their scout prep. Look, I won't name names, but I've had plenty of guys that I've played with over the years that were on scholarship that did not bring as much to the table as the walk-ons did. I mean, these guys do so much for this team, and Coach Barnes could not say enough about Lucas Campbell and Brad Woods. You know, he said one of the regrets he has is the fact that he couldn't find scholarships for those two young yeah. men. Mm -hmm. That's how much he cares about them, and they are on the floor now here in the final two and a half minutes. And if you're looking for an intramural squad, pick these two guys up. I saw them in warm-ups, man. They can get up. You, you don't think the walk-ons are athletic. I saw them getting up. There is Woodson out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. These guys just, they, they, they do so much as the... The, the thankless role that they really have. And I caught up with them earlier this year when I was here for a Georgia game. And, and Lucas Campbell, Brad Woodson were telling me some of the things that, you know, hey, we, we come to the game, we come to the arena, and security doesn't believe we're players. And we got to start showing IDs, you know, <laughs> when you go to pick up your team meal. And they're like, oh, are you sure you're with the team? It's like, yeah, I, I get a box. I, I'll take that. And so, <laughs> you know, it, it is not for the limelight, but they are all about the team and the process and the experience and they have made the most of it and made their mark on this Tennessee program. In and out for Campbell. And a foul against the Vols. 
156 on the clock. Hey, the SEC Now team will be back tonight after the game with all the hardwood highlights, analysis, and post-game interviews. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. Peter Burns, Pat Bradley, bring it all home for you. Busy night, SEC hoops, and some important games as well. Dave, I'm loving the conversation I'm watching right now. You know, Campbell just had his opportunity for a shot. Now Lamonte Turner's running the point. He's saying, Brad, you're next. I got you. I got you. Same play for Woodson. So <laughs> they're going to take turns until this clock runs out, trying to get themselves in the scoring column. There's Woodson. He's played in four games. This is his fifth this year, 20 games over his career. Lucas Campbell has played in now his seventh game of the year. He's played in 15 in his career. Here's Williams. Back to Woodson. Campbell. Pull up jumper. No good. Fulkerson there takes it away. Oh, Turner yelling at Campbell. Get open. He's open. Hey, man, it's tough coming off the bench for two hours <laughs> and just everybody waiting on you to <laughs> put it up. Uh, Woodson here, 12 and wide. He's got to be ready to shoot. His teammates are looking for him. The crowd's waiting on him. <laughs> the ribs are unkind to the walk -ons. Woodard swings it around to Carter. He'll fire the three. That won't go, but then Woodard follows it up and throws it down. Woodson. He'll line it up. Got it. So for our friends Peter Burns in studio, it's got to be a rule. For every team's senior night out there, if a walk-on makes a basket, they got to be on SEC Net Highlights. That has to be a mandatory rule. Brad Woodson get his in. Well, Tennessee will win this one 71-54. They will push their record to 27-3, and 15-2 in league play. Mississippi State follows fall, falls to 21 and 10, 21-9 and 9 and 8 in conference play. So Tennessee, three in a row. They win it over the Bulldogs. Time for us to get it to the studio. We'll have more from Knoxville in a moment.